Uh, start. All right, everybody. So we're going to model how to write a paragraph. So I kind of took this big picture question. How does the symbolism and on the sidewalk bleeding create more depth to the story? So I know that what I have to focus on is symbolism. I focus in on the question, all right? Always look at my question and I ask myself, what does the teacher want? Symbolism, and I, my argument is that it does create more depth, not that it doesn't. So I have to support a positive statement here. So down here I'm going to write, um, now I know that in my topic sentence, I'm going to come back right here to my graph. It says I have to restate the key words from the question, the author's name and the title, and then I have to present my position. So that's what goes into that first sentence. I cannot, I have to respect that sort of structure. So I'm going to start in the short story on, now I'm going to make mistakes as I go. So please forgive my, my typing mistakes. Okay, that's editing is done afterwards. At least I do. In the short story on the sidewalk, uh, Bleeding by Evan Hunter, it is obvious, whoops, obvious that the symbolism used in the text creates depth of understanding and appreciation for the readers. That is a positive statement. I have mentioned the title of the story and the name of the author. So that is a pretty decent, in my opinion, that's a pretty decent uh, intro sentence. I'm going to put it in yellow because I'm visual as a person. I know that it's really important to me when I do my outline that I not forget anything. So I'm going to go back to my poster because this is in yellow. I'm just going to put it in yellow. If you're not a visual person that may not speak to you, to me it does. The other thing that I did ahead of time is in my outline I put down the, um, the main transition words. So firstly, secondly, that's kind of basic. In my example, we're using to begin. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to change rather than firstly. I'm going to go to begin because otherwise it gets kind of stale. To begin, secondly, thirdly, fourthly. I want to zhuzh it up. So now I need my first argument. So I have to think of at least two big ways that symbolism is actually create depth. And there's symbolism in objects, there's symbolism in mood and atmosphere, there's symbolism in characters, right? The secondary characters, I know that they're also important. So I'm gonna start maybe with object symbolism. So I'm gonna say, to begin, uh, various objects used in the story create uh, symbolic meanings because they relate to ideas and concepts that are bigger than the objects themselves, all right? All right, so that's my first argument. Now, just because I do not want to repeat myself, and I'm worried about that, instead of secondly, I'm going to go furthermore. That's the that's a transition word in in my poster. So I'm going to change that. This sounds better than secondly. So furthermore, and I'm going to think of my second big argument because I don't want to talk about that in argument one. So if I want to avoid repeating myself, I need to start separating what my two arguments are. For me, it's just clearer to know this is the first item, that's the second item, and I'm not going to cross over. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say furthermore, uh, the author Oops, oh, I corrected that. Also uses um, symbolism in the, and I'm going to use the atmosphere, in the atmosphere and setting in order for the reader to feel more depth in the mood and understand. Andy's loneliness because I mean let's face it the aspects of the setting when I think about that for a minute that story we really know that Andy is lonely because 
it's raining. I, I know I'm going to talk about the rain. I know I'm going to talk about the fact that it's dark. And he's way down this alley, right? So these are things that I can talk about that have meaning, that call back to the fact that he's dying. In the first one, I think, if I think about objects that are important, the most important object I can think about is the jacket, right? The jacket that represents being part of the game, the jacket that has the color purple, which signifies royalty, and when he takes it off, he's not only getting rid of his belonging to a group, he's also getting rid of that false perception that he had that he was part of something important. He wants to be himself. So here's what I'm gonna do. For my proof, and I'm gonna use a different color for that. Once again, I'm super visual. I'm gonna use this purple color. And I'm gonna say, how am I gonna introduce this? I'll go back to my poster. It says, for example, now be specific and always choose the best proof to support my argument A. I think the jacket is the best proof. So, what's that word again? Uh, for example, okay. Uh, for example, the, well, funny that I choose purple as a color. Uh, the purple jacket that Andy wears in the story represents the gang, the royals. And for Andy, comma, like the title royals, it represents being part of an important social group, period. The color, now I could just use one sentence, but I'm not done. The color uh, purple is also symbolic as it represents royalty or being important. There's a mistake there, but that's okay. Now, if I wanted to, I could put a quote, okay? I could go in my story right here. I'm just gonna show you. I don't have my story open, but I could go here and I could open quotation marks and I could put a quote from the story here, close quotation marks, open a bracket and go hunter and then just page number okay so i'm not quite sure but i might do that afterwards maybe i'm just not ready for that right now but if i want to i can and i would show that my quote would have to illustrate how the jacket is important to him so that passage in the story where he says it was a royal and it meant something that's what i would put in now so my examples are there we're good so far now what I have to do is explain to the teacher how this represents that, which also ties back to my argument that it adds depth. So, different color, you can come in here, go purple, and I'm like, this proves <coughs> that um, the jacket is representative of an important, um, I don't like that, of being part of an important social group. Made a mistake there, that's okay. For Andy, it adds depth to the story because when he removes the jacket, it demonstrates that he realizes that being an individual is more important than being part of a gang. Now I'm not done. Sadly, because the reason he realizes that is because he's dying. Sadly, Andy has to be dying to realize that the guardians 
stabbed the jacket and not him as an individual. Individual. By removing the purple jacket, Andy realizes being a royal is not what is important in life and that is also a moral of the story. Whew. Okay, let's go back and read this over. Um, in the short story on the sidewalk leading by Evan Hunter, it is obvious that the symbolism used in the text creates depth of understanding and appreciation for the readers. To begin, various objects used in the story create symbolic meaning because they relate to ideas and concepts that are bigger than the objects themselves. For example, the purple jacket that Andy wears in the story represents the gang, the royals, and for Andy, like the title royals, it represents being part of an important social group. The color purple is also symbolic. It represents royalty or being important. Maybe I'd put a quote. I could even take the second sentence out and put my quote instead, like if I really wanted to shorten it. This proves that the jacket is representative of being part of an important social group for Andy, as it adds depth to the story because when he removes the jacket, it demonstrates, I repeat that too often, I have to change that, it shows, that he realizes that being an individual is more important than being part of the game. Sandy, Andy has to be dying to realize that the guardian stabbed the jacket and not him as an individual. By removing the jacket, he realizes that being a royal is not as important in life, and that is also a moral of the story. It's pretty good. All right, now, my next argument. Let's say I wanna keep this one, I've done like a really long one. Let's see if I can do this one a little bit shorter maybe. Because I can still go back and combine some of these sentences. I find I'm a little bit repetitive. So maybe I could go back in the purple part and kind of shrink that down a little bit more. I can do that later. Furthermore, the author uses symbolism in the atmosphere and setting in order for the reader to feel uh, more depth in the mood and understanding. Okay, proof. Um, now, I've already used for example. So what's the other one? In fact. All right, let's do that. In fact, um, Andy is lying in the rain, comma. So I have to use examples. Andy is lying in the rain at the end of a long alleyway separated from the rest of the city. He is alone and it is near midnight. Okay, so that's my example. I'm gonna make a little note for myself. Maybe here I would also like to use a quote and then I would put Hunter and you know the page number where I got it that talks about the alleyway that maybe describes it. Um, so this is kind of my example. Okay, this is directly from the story. I'm not making it up. So this is boom. Now, this proves to be, is that what I'm supposed to, this proves. Oh, this shows. Okay, this shows symbolism because the, because the reader feels that they feels Andy's isolation. He uh, rain is also associated to sadness symbolically and the fact that this happens at night, the
the reader also knows that bad events usually happen in the dark, right? We kind of, we know that. We know that when something bad's gonna happen, it never happens in broad daylight when it's super sunny. It always happens when it's dark out. So that's true. Here, uh, the rain, the isolation of the alley, and the darkness prepare us symbolically for the tragedy that will happen to dots. Andy will die at the end. This deepens I have to remember that my original point is it's deepening our understanding. This deepens our reading because the, re the reader is ready for, is mentally ready. I like that. Mentally ready for something bad to Okay, so I'm going to make this. Now, I could have done this point form as well. Some, some students are really good at doing outlines. They just use point form notes. For me, if I write out the sentence, I can kind of shrink it. It's easier for me to modify my sentence when it's tiny like this than if it's just point form and I have a big paragraph. I find I get lost when I write a big paragraph where I'm at. So, I would rather write out the sentences in my outline and then I kind of tweak them as I go. My conclusion comes back to this orange. It's the top bun, bottom bun of the top bun. Coming back to the top bun. In this short story on the sidewalk, Bleeding by Evan Hunter, it's obvious that the symbolism used in the text creates depth of understanding and appreciation for the reader. So I've got to restate that in different words. All in all, these two examples argue perfectly that symbolism is important and relevant to the way readers understand and appreciate this short story by All right, now, I have my two arguments, I have my proofs, I didn't put in my quotes. If I were gonna go back, maybe I'd wanna go into the story and add in my quotes. That's something we can practice a little further down. But let me see if I, there we go. If you don't have Grammarly, this is beautiful. Have you seen this? This is Grammarly, folks. Look at that. Dee -dee -dee. I don't even have to think about it. It's, oh, it doesn't like O-U-R, O-R. It's very American. Okay. So, now I have all of this done. Here's what I'm going to do. Because I wrote it all, if I had done it point form, I'd have to go put all my sentences in the box down here. But I don't have to. I've already written them. So, I'm going to go copy-paste all of this, and I'm going to read it over one last time. Control-C. I love doing this. This is the beauty of computers. We didn't have this when I was a student. There we go. That's my intro. And then I'm gonna go down here, watch this. I'm just gonna highlight all that. I use my colors, so I'm okay. I'll be able to double check. I'm so, I'm gonna do this. Now I'm gonna remove that. And I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna tack it all together, because it's one paragraph, right? And I'm gonna come back down here I'm going to remove all that. I'm so. I like to put two spaces. I know you don't have to, but that's me being old school. I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to do the same thing with my argument B. So I just pasted argument A. There's my argument B. There. I'm going to remove this. 
Now it depends. If you do point form, you're going to have to put all of this in sentences. I would rather sink in the time and do the outline really detailed, and then the final paragraph is all about tweaking. So it depends what kind of writer you are. I find it easier to just tweak, and I put in all of my time and effort into the outline. Because when I, once I get comfortable with it, I'm good. So let's have a look at what this looks like. I'm gonna go here, move it all on one page, and I'm gonna space this out So because I like to be able to read. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go maybe there. All right, here we go, folks. In the short story on the sidewalk leading by Evan Hunter, it's obvious that the symbolism used in the text creates depth of understanding and appreciation for the readers. Chink. To begin, various objects used in the story create symbolic meaning because they relate to ideas and concepts that are bigger than objects themselves. For example, the purple jacket that Andy wears in the story represents the gangs of oil, and for Andy, I'm gonna take this out, I don't need this. It represents being part of an important social group. The color purple is also symbolic as it represents royalty or being important. Now, I don't have a quote yet. I'm just gonna highlight that. If you guys don't know where the highlighter is, it's right up here, it's awesome. This proves that the jacket is representative of being part of an important social group for Andy. It adds depth to the story because when he removes the jacket, it demonstrates he realizes that being an individual is more important than being part of the game. Sadly, Andy has to be dying to realize that the guardian states stabbed the jacket and not him as an individual. By removing, I don't need to say the purple. I'll take that out. And just by removing the jacket, Andy realizes being a royal is not what is important in life. And that is also a moral of the story. Furthermore, the author uses symbolism in the atmosphere and setting in order for the reader to feel more depth in the mood and understand Andy's loneliness. In fact, Andy is lying in the rain at the end of a long alleyway separated from the rest of the city. He is alone and it's near midnight. And I need another quote. I'm gonna do this, just in case I wanna include a quote later, that's where it's gonna go. And take this, and I have, to, it's all one paragraph, so it has to come here. This shows symbolism because the reader feels Andy's isolation. Rain is also associated with sadness, yes. Symbolically, comma. And the fact that this happens at night, the reader also knows that bad events usually happen in the dark. Here, the rain, the isolation of the alley, comma, and the darkness prepares symbolically for the tragedy that will happen. Andy will die at the end. This deepens our reading because the reader is mentally ready for something bad to happen. All in all, these two examples argue perfectly that symbolism is important and relevant to the way readers understand and appreciate the short story. Not bad. Not bad? All right, end of video. <laughs>